Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than ever man did merit. My talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Of this matter is little Cupid's crafty arrow made, that only wounds by hearsay. Now begin, for look where Beatrice, like a lapwing, <laughs> runs close by the ground to hear our conference. <laughs> the presence to angling is to see the fish cut with our golden oars, the silver stream, and greedily devour the treacherous bait. <laughs> Fear you not my part of the dialogue. <laughs> then go we near her, that her ear lose nothing of the false sweet bait that we lay for it. No, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince and my new trothed lord. And did they bid you tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it. But I persuaded them, if they loved Benedict, to wish him wrestle with affection and never to let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? Doth not the gentleman deserve as full as fortunate a bed as ever Beatrice shall couch upon? Oh, God of love, I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man. But nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn ride sparkling in her eyes, misprising what they look on. And her wit, oh. oh values itself so highly that to her all matter else seems weak. She cannot love, nor take no shape nor project of affection. She is so self-endeared. Sure, I think so. And therefore certainly it were not good she knew his love, lest she make sport at it. Why, you speak true. I never yet saw man. How wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured. But she would spell him backwards. Sure, sure. Such carping is not commendable. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into air. Oh, she would laugh me out of myself. Press me to death with wit. <laughs> Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in size, waste inwardly. It were a better death than die with mocks is as bad as die with tickling. Yet tell her of it! Hear what she will say! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Rather, I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. And truly, I'll devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. One doth not know how much an ill word may empoison liking. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have, as to refuse so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. He is the only man I ever saw, always excepted, my dear Claudio. I pray you be not angry with me, madam. Speaking my fancy, Signor Benedict, for shape, for bearing, argument, and valour goes foremost in report throughout the land. <laughs> Indeed, he hath an excellent good name. His excellence did earn it ere he had it. <laughs> when are you married, madam? Why, every day tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel which is the best to furnish me tomorrow. 